I'm John Paul Flame, joined by Eric Bickle, Johnny Cakes Auville, and Jason Bishop. And joining us right now on the Mattress Warehouse Hotline is our pal Tom Lavero, contributor for 1067 The Fan, columnist at the Washington Times. And Tom, reading your article about Snyder, I love the line here where you wrote, Dan Snyder's gate, though, expands far beyond his multi-million dollar property. He is a walking gated community shutting out all around him and is now paying the real price for his arrogant isolation. Well done, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, boys. I think that's a good way to describe the situation he's in. And usually when you have money, that will work just fine. You don't really need anybody else. But at some point when you want something, you've got to build up relationships. And it's one, of the, one of his many issues in the possibility of getting a stadium in the district is – he has a relationships with nobody, no political connections, zero at, at this point. Uh, and that's how that's how if he's got any chance of getting anything done, which I don't think he does. That's how it happens. You also point out in your article that a lot of times minority owners do, in fact, then become the majority owners. Now, the you know, sources are saying that Daniel Snyder doesn't want to sell the team. But you do point out that this is kind of what happens in a lot of situations. Well, usually, I mean, the, the minority ownership slice, I mean, there's not many benefits to being a minority owner. You get a nice seat in the owner's box on Sunday, and you get to tell people you own a piece of the Redskins or whatever team, but that's about it. I mean, there's one boss. But what it usually does is you have to be vetted and approved by the NFL to be a minority owner. And then when it comes time that if a team comes up for sale and you're interested in getting in at, at the head table, you have a much better chance of being that guy. Uh, David Tepper of the Carolina Panthers was a minority owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, as was Jimmy Haslam, who wound up owning the Browns. So, so do these guys, do they, I mean, do you imagine, because nobody knows Snyder because he's such a weirdo, uh, I mean, are they considered sort of traitors, these minority owners, for kind of – I mean, it seems like they're undercutting him and trying to, 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 to take over if they could. Well, I think, uh, you know, what I reported last night, that they, they tried to uh, buy him out and take right. over the team. Uh, I don't think that ha- – I think that happened probably within the last year, probably mm-hmm. a few, uh, at least a few months back, this, this push it's to try to get him. It's not a development, he, yeah. Right, and he wouldn't budge. Right. Uh, the recent development, I think, is, is putting their shares up for, up for sale. I find it difficult to believe that they haven't been able to sell them, as some of the reports have said, because I, as damaged as this franchise would be, it's still a slice of an NFL team. And like I said, right. there are a lot of benefits to it. So uh, I think Snyder probably sees it as a betrayal. Right. Uh, but... Uh, I think, you know, the rest of the fan base probably sees them as saviors. Right. Tom, is it it as simple as Fred Smith, one of the minority owners who is the CEO of FedEx, just all of a sudden woke up and said, well, I'm tired of being a minority owner. I just don't want to do business with Dan Snyder any longer. Or has this been simmering for a long time behind the scenes? I mean, I know he's been, you know, part of the ownership group for a long time. You know, I think that uh, at one point he tried to buy the Titans, uh, so I think you know, he goes back to the, I think, the uh, World Football League, uh, Fred Smith. So uh, he's, I think he's wanted to own a team on and off for a while. Uh, and uh, he's 77. I think he's 77 years old. So I'm not sure how much his interest is in owning any other team. But, I mean, I think the motivation was the frustration of being a partner with, with Dan Snyder had finally reached its limit at, at, at that point. And uh, there's not a whole lot they're going to be able to do about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. We threw this out. And there are a lot of Redskins fans, and even there's a part of me that's sad to see the name go, right? And a lot would love to see it stay. But if you told them that uh, Dan would sell the team, <laughs> and then they, but they'd have to rename it, I think 100% of fans would sign up for that. Well, I wrote in that column, I think Redskins fans would say you could call them the Dallas Cowboys if they knew that Snyder, yeah. you know, was going to be out as owner. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, I think people would make that trade 
a- absolutely, especially f- longtime fans that have lived through through the last twenty years, and also, you know, I mean, part taken a beating and grown weary of fighting to defend the name of their franchise. It's hard enough rooting for a bad team without, you know, having to defend the name of the team to outsiders. I I mean, part of I think the name thing at this point is uh, a lot of things coming together, but there's a weariness of Redskins fans of fighting that battle anymore. They're just tired of tired of everything. And I agree tired with that. Of that. Yeah. So are the local that. radio hosts. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No doubt. Hey, Tom, we asked Mike Jones from the USA Today this. So in all your years covering the Redskins, and you've covered them probably the entire Snyder tenure as owner, how many yes. actual interactions have you had with them? You know, I have none. Yeah. Wow. And remember, I worked for a station that he owned. Right. Yeah. And I had zero. It's amazing. Here, here's my only interaction with Dan Snyder. Uh, the book that I wrote uh, in the, uh, about you know 15 years ago, Hail Victory, uh, I got an email from, Car- remember Carl Swanson? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. His, 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 one of his henchmen? Yes. Uh, he sent me an email a year later, and I saw the email before I opened it. I thought, oh, my God, I'm getting sued for something. Mm. Uh, and it turns out that Snyder wanted to buy – about a dozen copies of the books and have me autograph them for hmm. him. Wow. Yeah. So I said, go ahead and send. So they sent these a dozen books to me, you know, FedEx, ironically. <laughs> and uh, I autographed them, just general autographs. He wanted to give them to his friends. And uh, that's my only interaction with Dan Snyder. So this I'm is a rhetor- not a, All right. This is a rhetorical question, but I'm just going to throw it out there anyway. So. I'm guessing his name was on the checks when you worked for him. Um, when you guys would have a company Christmas party and you're hanging out with the guys from the Sports Fix, he never stopped by once. Well, the checks were the name. His name was not on the checks. I think okay. he always showed his face in the in the in the station once that I I recall, and I wasn't there for it. And no, he wasn't. He wasn't uh, hanging around with us at, at the Christmas party or, or anything like that. I mean, remember, in the early days of the ownership, he was more likely to be at the Washington Post Christmas party uh, than he would be at the radio station party. I don't know if you remember the early days, but he was very tight with the Post back well, in the early days. he would lobby them, right? He would show up occasionally, right? Yeah. He would yeah. also yeah, be, like, I never... unna- he'd be the unnamed source in a ton of stories from what I remember. I he would leave stuff to the post all the time uh, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, so, so I tell you what, uh, of all, I to be honest with you, sometimes we used to sit there at at nine eighty and 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 see the Redskins players that you would get, and we're thinking, what are we lepers? <laughs> I mean, you got you guys would get better access than we did. Well, but that was all on our own. Yeah, we would that have to go through their agents. They, yeah. they didn't do it. Yeah, well, us. it certainly was not the team helping us yeah. at that yeah. point. <laughs> so so where do you think – I mean, I know it's just kind of a silly game, and we've been doing this for years. But, I mean, now that it's actually coming to fruition, um, where do you, what do you think is the leader? I was – I'd kind of, you know, look, I've always kind of supported the name. To me, it's, I'm, I'm not trying to offend anybody. It's the name of the dumb team. I don't think you name it an offensive term. But, um, you know, people are upset. The market's spoken, so it's going to change. So I'd kind of wrapped my brain around Warriors, but now they don't even want to be associated with that. Red Tails, I don't see the D.C. tie. I like the story. Where do, you, where do you think they go? Where do you think the leader in the clubhouse is? You know, it could be a name that nobody's really – put out there i mean i think i think it's smart of them to get out of the indian icon business for sure it's just, for just, sure just get out of it you yeah. know it's just yeah because you i mean you're always leaving yourself vulnerable for attack on something like that uh the red tail has the military connection uh of the uh fighter unit mm-hmm. that were, were called the red tails and i think since snyder dc is military and defense; mm-hmm. uh, those are his connections. That he thinks that's his 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 high-powered business core. So I think that that would appeal to him. Uh, well, a, without a DC reference, at least a military reference. And we've heard Ron Rivera, uh, who comes from a military family, mention about paying tribute to the military somehow in in the name. But apparently. 
they're going to keep the burgundy and gold. Is that the, That's what I keep re- hearing, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what that's it what sounds we're hearing like. Too. Well, you know, this, I I don't know. I think they're missing an opportunity to make the switch to the maroon and black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we talked about that. that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, Tom, um, just kind of switching gears over to the Nats and baseball, and it's supposed to start July twenty third. Let's hope that it does. Um, do you, you know, we obviously with the Nats, we've already seen Zim and Joe Ross bail out. Do you see any other players bailing out for you know different reasons? Um, I, I'm sure we're going to see other big name stars around the league kind of bail out. You've, you've seen a handful of them, but. I'm just hoping that it goes off as scheduled and you don't see too many guys, um, you know, decide not to play, even though it's only 60 games. What do you think? Uh, I think they'll get, they'll get started. I think what they need to do is make sure nobody's friends with Freddie Freeman and calls him on the phone because that's what Nick Marcake has said. He bowed out after talking to Freddie Freeman on the phone and finding out how sick he was. Uh, I think they'll get started. I think what they're doing now and the challenges now are minuscule compared to when the games get underway and they're undertaking road trips to different cities and stuff like that. Trying to keep the protocol in place under those conditions, uh, if they somehow pull it off, it'll be a miracle. I think that's going to be a challenge they're not going to be able to meet. I think at some point they're not going to be able to finish the season that they started. I think, but you see, I think that's true for all the teams, but, uh, you know, maybe basketball has a chance because they're contained in, in, in one place, although I don't see those players staying in that bu- bubble for very long before they say, I'm out of here. I just think uh, everyone ha- has to make the effort to start. I don't think any of them are going to finish. Really? Well, what about football? Yeah. Same thing? I, I, football, I mean, this is July. Football is going to be being played in the heart of what we've been told is the second wave coming. Uh, flu season, for God's sakes. Uh, I just think football. Well, are we going to freak happen. out about flu season now? Well, I, I tell you what, I think it'll be a lot harder to get a flu shot this time around than it will before because I think a lot of people who didn't get one before are going to be lining up at CVS or whatever drugstore well, they, they go to yeah, to they get should. one. I know they should. Yeah, I hope Entercom gives us our free flu shots again. You know, you know, I'll take all the shots. Get them. Give us all the shots, yeah. Tommy. We take them over here. We're that's junks right. a pro flu shot. Yep. Yeah, this is, we, that's why they call you guys the junkies. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, have you been? I've actually been impressed, and I, I know I don't. I don't think Tom's a, a, a golf guy, but but um, I've been impressed. They've been able to plow through this, and I think even if you don't like golf, you got to root for the PGA Tour to continue to plow through this. Because if they can't get it done, nobody will. Pretty sure he's definitely yeah, I mean, not a golf guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, but he pays attention to the, but, to the story. But, but I understand it's an individual sport more than a team, obviously more than a team mm-hmm. sport, and it's played outdoors. It yeah. has the best chance yes. of any of them to be able to, to succeed uh, without some kind of mass outbreak. Uh, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes in, in locker rooms. I don't know what their protocol is. And uh, as long as they stay away from the poor support personnel, who are probably the ones that would wind up getting sick, I think you're right. I think golf has the best chance uh, of, of pulling a season off. And I think, you know, people will take anything more on their Sunday afternoons than Sherlock Holmes reruns on TCM. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. 